Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, this is one I think a lot of people have been waiting for, and uh, the developer's preview, at least, of Edge is available to look at on Linux. Now, the beta channel is not quite out yet, but you know what? If I can put Microsoft Edge on a Linux computer and play around with it, let's go ahead and have a look at that. Now, why might one want to do that? Well, because there are some compelling reasons. Um, you know, Firefox is going on down the tubes. I mean, in reality, that used to be the old meme, right? Microsoft Internet Explorer, the number one browser to download a better browser. Well, I'm downloading Edge on Firefox. Are you listening, Mozilla? Please, are you listening? We want you to succeed, Mozilla, but you've got to get your head out of your rear end and get back to focusing on your browser again, not the other weird stuff you have been doing. Uh, but nevertheless, there are good legitimate reasons. Uh, this might be something that ends up getting on my computer because, hey, I do web development stuff and people actually use Edge. And, you know, that's going to be Mac people and Windows people. And so it might be a browser I need to throw on my computer so I can test websites on it. Now, in theory, anything that should work on Chrome or Chromium should look pretty much the same, but nevertheless, we might want to poke around with it, see how it works, and things like that. Now, my environment here, I'm using Linux Mint Mate. I w originally was going to do it on KDE Neon, but it would not allow it to uh, install on KDE Neon, so I switched over to uh, this one here. So we are on the MicrosoftEdgeInsider.com, and we are on the Linux download. There are a couple of options. You pull this down. We have a Linux RPM. We have a Linux.deb package. We also have a Debian, Ubuntu, um, a, uh, a PPAs or, or other repos. We have a Fedora, and we have an OpenSUSE. So you have a variety of options. Of course, every single time that you wanted to download any of these things, you have to go ahead and uh, accept. I was hoping to refresh the page there and show you, but... You know, you have to accept their uh, license terms, of course, and it's Microsoft, so we're not going to read this. Um, it's just, you know, terrifying, terrifying. But anyway, I am, yeah, using Firefox to download Microsoft Edge. The whole computer world has gone in a full circle now, has it not? So I went ahead and cleared out the, uh, the cache partition to reset the browser. So I'll show you what that looks like. And then at the end, I will show you where those settings are if you want to go ahead and, and erase it. But uh, we went ahead and installed it. I re uh, restarted the computer. Now it will appear in my internet section on my Mate window. And uh, we get launched in here. And uh, we get our nice, hello, Dave. I'm watching you, Dave. Uh, Microsoft Edge is coming in. Compatibility without compromise. <laughs> yeah, all yeah, right. Uh, opt, you know, there's an opt-out. Help Microsoft improve products by sending optional diagnostic data about how you use the browser. I will go ahead and turn that off because it's already collecting enough anyway. We do have a privacy statement. We do have a learn more. We're not going to... Let's go ahead and click that and see what we get. Here is the privacy statement. Uh, basically, it's the Microsoft privacy statement if you've done anything with Microsoft. You know, we collect everything. We store everything. We use it as we want, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, let's go ahead and accept this. So we are giving away our firstborn child. And now we actually have a, a selection. Do we want an inspirational or do we want an informational or do we want a pure focused baby? I like the inspirational of all of these. We get a nice, uh, it's like Bing, you know, we get a nice uh, picture background here. We can search the web over here. My guess is it's going to Bing. That's um, going ahead and refreshing us on our first load. I believe that's a first load thing, so... There we are, Microsoft Edge Developers Channel, so you can get all the information about it. Let's just go ahead and we're going to close it down and we're going to go ahead and uh, start it back up here. If I can actually type the name Edge correctly. Hopefully it will get us here on our inspirational. Would you like to set uh, Edge as your default? No, thank you. So you can see here our inspirational. We do still have news. Scroll down down here. We can see what we have. Hey, a nice 64 today in town. So this is actually organized quite nicely. Uh, it does look pretty good. Here is some uh, individual uh, pages here. I'm guessing if we click on this three bars, we can get rid of them or we can re remove them. We can add our own favorite things over here. 
or we can hide the quick links altogether. So that's actually really cool. Now, the biggest thing I was concerned about is uh, when Google pushed out in the Chromium code and then through the Chrome code, where the idea is, is that if you log into any Google product, it automatically logs you into the browser. You have to disable that before you log in any service. I was actually concerned that Microsoft might do that. As of this time in this developer, what I did here is I actually logged into an old Hotmail account that I have just to double check if it logs you into the browser. And indeed, it does not not. We do have the option to sign in. And if we do sign into the browser, um, oh, we're not supported on signing into our browser yet. Uh, that's probably coming on down the pipeline. But if you are signed into the browser, then you do have the ability to sync a lot of different tools. You can kind of see here what our sign in does. Maybe it just didn't do that because it's not supported. Okay, we'll go ahead and check that when it's officially released. But when you do that, you can sync passwords, payment information, addresses, browser data. This is, there's a, maybe it's a little more tinfoil hatty, but the reason Google started to do this is because Flash is dying at the end of December here. And uh, Flash is really the way that a lot of the big companies have been storing most data about you. And with that being completely killed and depreciated, they needed to find a better way to store all this information about you. And Browser Profiles is it because by syncing this in, it's going to store all of your data in the cloud rather than the very small amount of cookie data and uh, cache data that you can use with a browser. As far as everything else, you can go through here. We have tracking, prevention, on or off, basic, uh, balance, strict. I'm not sure what tracking uh, prevention is all about because, you know, hey, other people can't track you, but we'll track you all we want. Include Choose when you're, you know, basically all, all the, the stuff. You can see it is set up a little bit different, more differently than uh, Google Chrome is, and I really like this structure a whole lot better. Uh, this is so much easier to find whatever we want. And so overall, from a settings perspective, an organization perspective, this is really good. I really like how, how they're setting everything up. I like the options, of course, that we have and, you know, whatever that happens to be. Um, let's see how, how it works. Uh, let's go ahead and search for something. And, of course, it's searching through Bing. There's no uh, surprise there. So there we go. It's giving us a definition of something and, of course, something from Abbey Roads. So we always see here's a video of something, lyrics for something, and then you can see what we get. So, you know, Bing is Bing, whatever that happens to be. Uh, other things that I did find, I have not seen the pop-up yet uh, since I've been running this on the video, but it was in clear Microsoft fashion. It was kind of annoying me. I think it was giving me pop-ups for, is it this one, collections? It was giving me pop-ups for collections and pop-ups for user feedback, all sorts of other interesting stuff. And so, yeah, there's definitely does have the annoyance factor coming from Microsoft, and definitely it's giving me, uh, you know, the other general Microsoft concerns that I might have. But as far as browsers are concerned, uh, it does seem to be a decent browser. Uh, I would certainly say it's probably not going to be good for your privacy, but definitely good for security. I like the how the structures are, uh, the settings are organized better. Everything is much easier to find than it is on, on Chrome and Chromium as last I checked those settings, which actually wasn't too long ago on my Windows computer for development testing purposes. Uh, profiles are not yet supported. Maybe that's why it's not logging us in. Uh, my guess is when profiles are supported on Linux, it will automatically log you into profiles. If you're using Edge on Windows, let me know if it automatically signs you into the browser if you sign up for a Microsoft service. Sign into a Microsoft service, I should say. That's definitely an interesting perspective. But as far as everything else is concerned, uh, basic web browser, it seems to run very well. Uh, let's go ahead and see how it loads up a couple of websites. Let's do switch to linux.com. See how it loads things up. So this site is notoriously not a super fast site, but uh, it does seem to be running it fairly well, actually. So yeah, do actually like the speed of that. One I have that is going to be faster. Let's do... This site here should load a lot faster, which indeed it does. This is, of course, my writing site. So if you want to learn how to write books or such, this is a good place. Everything is rendering correctly. I'm not seeing any specific problems here out of the box. 
So definitely, um, definitely a good browser. The structure and organization, I wonder if I can customize this, move some of these things out of the way there. Let's see if there's a way to customize the view. I'd like to probably hide some of those things up there. Let's see, here's apps. Oh, install this site as an app. Sure, let's install the site as an app. Why not? Okay, so I guess that's just giving us... Um, Yeah, it's kind of giving us a web app of it. That's kind of cool. That's neat. Uh, cool feature. And let's see, extensions, collections, anything from the Google Chrome extension should work in here. There's that. We can zoom in. We can zoom out. There you go. Show favorites button. Show collections button. Uh, show feedback button. I don't have the option to, to not show the uh, the profile button, uh, at least not that I see right here. But you can turn off some of the excess bloat stuff up there. That's fine. So there you go. Um, overall, yeah, I think it looks like a pretty good browser uh, out of the box. So people that are going to need a Microsoft-based browser for development purposes in Linux, it's coming on down the road. Uh, I'm still going to trust uh, Firefox more just because, you know, Firefox. Uh, but it's coming on down the road, and it's looking very good. It's looking very promising. A couple things we still need to test. Now, uh, before we go, I did tell you I was going to tell you where the configuration settings are. So if you want to re reset the browser... Go into your main home folder, show your hidden files, and under config, you will see it right here, Microsoft Edge Dev Browser. So these are going to be all of your basic profile information. So if you want to go ahead and reset the browser, just go ahead and uh, delete this folder there. And then when you delete the folder, the very next time you boot up Microsoft Edge, it is going to go back to the original startup screen, which... By the way, you can't really get out of here without pushing the um, Alt F4 button to close it. So there you have it. There is all about Microsoft Edge. Looks pretty decent. I can't say I'm going to run it as my default web browser, but it does have a lot of good purposes, a lot of good use, and it runs very well. So it's a good alternative Chromium-based browser if you want to get away from Google and jump into the fire of uh, you know, Microsoft, you can go ahead and do that. Or, hey, if you're in a case like me where you are going to need Microsoft things for testing uh, purposes, development purposes, it's there. And you can call, already go ahead and test it without a Microsoft account. You just need to uh, agree to give over your firstborn child or whatever else they have in that little privacy policy tool. But anyway, there is my thought. Let me know your thoughts on Microsoft Edge. Are you going to use it? Are you not? And if you are on Windows, I am curious if you do sign into any other online Microsoft uh, site, does it automatically log you into the browser as well? I'm curious in that question. We just can't test that right now on Linux. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.